Ikaw ka si Kukun, and you pack for ice bridges. Sea ice is foundational to the way of life in Cotsview during winter and spring. To better understand rapid sea ice loss in Cotsview Sound, our team set up sea ice mass balance sites, which are used to understand the process of ice growth and melt. So in order to measure the water depth, it's basically a measuring tape on a reel and at the bottom of that is a weight and that weight we open it out and it makes a bar and we drop that through a hole in the ice and then let it fall to the bottom and when it hits the ground obviously you can feel the tension on the measuring tape loosen and then you can measure how deep that water is and then bring it up to the bottom of the ice and you can measure how thick that ice is and then if you pull it really really gently it'll then fold up again and come back up. So we did that quite a few times in order to find a spot that was going to be deep enough for us to put our instrumentation in. And once we found our sites, what we needed to do was space out all of the different stakes that we're using. So they were all sitting two meters apart from one another and we had a grid of nine snow stakes on the inside that could be read from the perimeter of the area. And they all just required a really simple two inch auger hole and they sat in there at the surface of the ice. And then four hot wire ice sticks that sit around the edges. So we put two sites out. We put one northeast of Kotzebue, trying to get into the bay area where there's not so much influence of the river. And then we put another one past the runway of the airport, right in the middle of the channel. And we have someone in the community going out and doing measurements once a week. Someone does need to go out there and look at each stake and measure the snow depth on each one and the ice thickness. So what Bobby's doing at the moment is putting a current through this wire and the wire goes down under the ice and then back up. And so basically as far as he can pull it up and then he reads it off the marker, it'll tell you how thick that ice is. Glad it works, it's great. They work so well, this is great. So we're out at what we call our Northern Bay Mass Balance site that I put in with Carson in the middle of winter and Bobby and Alex have been monitoring it weekly since then and at the same time we can measure snow depth and that's what all of these stakes are here. Today is our last day we're going to pull them out. With the melting there well about a foot underneath there with this research we're able to be getting some measurements on snow depth and of course uh, ice depths on the corner ones here. We call them hot wire thickness gauges and they're here to measure the thickness of the ice as it grows and then as it melts. But we're doing this so that we can understand how the ice has been growing both in this site where there is very little current to the channel site which is west of town where there's been really strong current and we can see what the difference in heat fluxes has been from the water column below. I'm right now just pulling these out, we're calling it the season before conditions deteriorate too much more. The most favorite tool that we have here is called a tuk. It's an ice pick. It's the tool that we use to chisel out holes for ice fishing. This cut to be sound area when the tide's going out is a favorable spot for our local she fish. It's a white fish. It's our source of fresh fish throughout the winter. As Alex and Bobby made weekly measurements at the ice mass balance sites the first winter, we would look at the data they gathered to try to understand the driving factors behind the growth and melt of the ice. By the end of the winter, it became clear from the data that most of the heat responsible for melting the ice was coming from the water below. And we wanted to get a clear picture of when and how that melting was occurring. So we decided to install under ice measurements of the water temperature and currents at the mass balance site the following winter. We also installed a weather station to monitor how much heat was being lost or gained out of the snow surface. I just got back to Fairbanks from Cotsview to put out an automated weather station and two sea ice mass balance sites and, and deploy two ice tethered moorings. So what we have here is two separate moorings and they're both going to hang from the top of the ice, through the ice and down into the water column below the ice. But this one, there are all these metal cylinders 
and they are Seabird SB39 temperature recorders. And then this is a concerto which records temperature but also records the salinity of the water. So this is an aqueduct that has a little head on it with transducers that send out pulses of acoustic energy. So you get three-dimensional velocity vector so you can tell the speed and direction of the water as it passes by. So that'll help give us information about the current underneath the ice as it's melting or growing. Two of these put in the water fairly close to each other. We're going to get a, a long view of what's going on with the currents underneath the ice and how that's transporting heat as well as salinity. So that involved drilling some 10 inch holes in the ice. lowering some oceanographic instruments down through that hole and then essentially anchoring them to the top of the ice and letting that anchor freeze into place. We got that done in probably just over an hour, so that gave us time to go back on shore and pick up the weather station and install the weather station. It left the second day open for deploying the two sea ice mass balance stations and Bobby and this time his son Vincent as well came out on the sea ice with us and it looks like between the two of them they're going to be taking the ice measurements for the rest of the winter. We're gearing up for our final day on the ice. We're gonna go pull out the mass balance site that's up in the bay, which was the last thing we did last year as well, but it was over two weeks later. But the ice is starting to get dangerous, so everybody who we, we trust about this ice says it's worth going out on. You could drive probably a mile over and be safe or maybe even two miles. From the beginning, the project has always been to study the breakup processes, so we've always been trying to account for the fact that we're here in a time when the ice is thinning. So we're always checking in every day with our elder advisors and with Alex and seeing what they think about the ice and, and, and trusting their judgment. It's melting quick. Uh -huh. It's now less than a mile and a half out from Shady Creek. Wow. Way, way in. In the channel, the ice is getting down to, say, nine inches or maybe even less. Out where we're going today, there's still a decent amount of ice. It's a place that generally grows more ice and breaks up pretty late, but the problem is getting there in the first place, so that's why we need to go now, because we have to get across some thinner ice in order to get there. This is called the Bay Site. This is outside of town. It's called the Illivac Bay. I'm going to measure the ice with a weight, with a negative and positive battery. I'm just gonna hook it up to these little prongs down here and see what kind of reading we get with the washer. It's a little washer that measures. I'll have to heat it up first so it'll break it free. So I hook up a negative to one side and then the uh, positive to the other and it'll, it'll get create a little heat source through the wire that's run through this uh, tube and then see if I can break the washer free. Okay. So now that it's thawed and uh, froze free, I can bring it up and then see what kind of measurement we have with the washer. So I'm reading 22 inches of ice right now. And now I'm gonna do the snow. You can get a approximate snow depth from where the thickness of the ice is minus how much it shows at the top, which is like 56. So that's almost 30 inches of snow. And then move on to the next measurement pole. The ice thickness here may be different from the one just little ways over. Because it's closer to shore, it could be thicker. 24 and a half inches. Over here is the 18 inches. So I'm reading 15 inches now we'll go to the little ones for the snow measurements. These little tubes are measured by inches. And what we're reading at visually right now is the measurement visually surface from uh, the bottom of the ice. So we're at 23 inches of snow just right here, right where I'm standing. This is the thickest measurement on site. And this is the thinnest measurement on site, along with our depths of snow. We've been going at them by the week, uh, started doing them twice a week. It's been fun. <laughs> 
Seven, eight. The measurements we conducted in 2018 and 2019 continued into 2020 through a partnership with the Alaska Arctic Observatory and Knowledge Hub. So we're measuring out where the poles will go now, now that we got our square. Just figuring out how deep we need to drill into the ice to uh, secure down the measuring posts about 12 to 16 inches deep. We are here at the Channel Mass Balance site, installing it for the third year running. We are in the river outflow channel right in front of town, so we're only like a thousand yards from town, much closer than the other site. We installed the other site this morning. So we've just laid out the grid and now we're going to start drilling holes and putting the stakes in. Thickness wise, over there it was over four feet. Josh, what is it here? Three foot, four inches. I've got here the, the hot wire. Do it fast, don't let it get stuck. We're gonna drill a hole all the way through the ice to the water below and then we're gonna pass this whole thing down. So this is the third year that I've helped install these mass balance sites in the same locations. And this is the first year where we've installed it while the sound was actually frozen over all the way to the mouth of the sound. So the ice is significantly thicker. We have to drill a lot deeper before we get to the water. We're also installing it a month later, so the ice has had more time to grow. But even so, it's thicker than it ever got the past two years. So in many ways, it's nice that we have this year as more of a baseline for what conditions are like in sort of a winter that people living in Cotsby would consider to be more normal. The past few winters have been extremely anomalous. And it also gave us measurements to sort of verify the value of these ice thickness and snow depth measurements. They really are capturing what's going on in terms of heat input to the ice and how the ice grows. So it's great to have them back out here again uh, this third year. Being able to determine sea ice safety has a significant impact on the livelihood of people within and around the subsistence community of Kotzebue. The ice mass balance sites are one of several ways the Akagvik Sikakun team seeks to find ways to increase knowledge of how environmental factors affect the stability of sea ice in Kotzebue Sound. Akagvik Sikakun, in your path for ice bridges.